Thank you for joining us today. My name is Gail Watson, President and CEO of Women Speakers Association, and we are very excited to introduce you to our featured author, Tracy Eman. She is part of the book, Voices of the 21st Century. This book serves as an opportunity for women from around the world to come together to share their voice with powerful and a passionate message to make a difference. It's done by one woman simply stepping into her own truth to be vulnerable and transparent. And I know this takes tremendous amount of courage, which is why as more of us rise up to use our voice, to guide, to educate, to inspire, we must support one another by both listening and sharing. Uh, I'd like to welcome to the show today. Welcome, Tracy. Thank you. Thanks so much ha for having me. Always an honor. Uh, you are amazing. Uh, uh, I know we, you shared um, your story in Voices of the 21st Century, the very first edition. Uh, and that just has sent you on a complete um, new journey. And uh, you came out with your own independent book. And um, so I'm very excited to share your story in you know, where we last left off. <laughs> and uh, so for those of you who don't know Tracy, uh, what we'd love to do is get to know you a little bit more right now and start off by maybe, you know, share, give us some insight to what your story is about and also what inspired or motivated you to share it. I'd love to. Thank you so much. So my story starts with a cancer diagnosis, really. Um, I mean, obviously not my whole life story, but, but the one that kind of spurred me in this direction of actually getting um, involved in Voices of the 21st Century, the first volume, and through some encouragement from Gail, I shared my story. Uh, Gail and I met probably about 13, 14 years ago, and I actually was building the first Women Speakers Association website going through chemo. So it was one of those things where I didn't feel like I was an inspiration and I didn't feel like anybody really needed to hear my story. And yet by sharing my story, it's amazing what has, has transpired. Um, I am getting such an incredible feedback from people going, you know, wow, it's just so good to actually hear somebody that's, you know, maybe on the other side of a diagnosis or whether it's somebody that's like, you know, was able to embrace, you know, the silver lining, you know, <laughs> of, of a situation that maybe didn't feel like there was going to be any bright spots to it. So that's part of what my story is. Um, I'm celebrating 10 years of being cancer free. And that's what I talk about in my chapter of Voices of the 21st Century in Volume 3. Right, by you, uh, I mean, having been um, beside you during that time with your diagnosis, it was a very scary, uh, traumatic time for sure. Uh, and then you kept it silent for so many years. But by releasing that story, I mean, it has literally uh, changed your life. But I am watching it change the lives of other people. I mean, when you came out with silver, the silver lining of cancer. Wow, that's a bold statement. Let's go like that because that statement is so strong. Because how could you? How could anyone think that there's anything great about cancer? I, I agree, and and I think that it's it's very easy to you know stop and and dwell on what you're dealing with because it's it's awful. Like it really is. Like I mean, there's there's no way to sugarcoat it. Um, having gone through it myself and, and having my mom gone through cancer as well. And just knowing that, you know, this could be it. I, I think that's just so, it is so crazy. You don't expect that, you know, at a young age or any age really to be thinking about that as part of where you're at right now. And, but what I found is what I, how I was able to get through things was concentrating on the silver lining, concentrating on the glass is half full. And, one of the reasons, and I, I know I talked about this with Gail, and is that I wrote, I compiled a, a group of authors to write this book, The Silver Lining of Cancer, so that we could get this in waiting rooms around the world. And that's still my mission, because when you're sitting there waiting 
on a, a treatment and you're feeling not so wonderful and you've got all these people magazines and I'm sorry, people magazines for, you know, throwing you under the bus, but really I didn't need to see that right then. I wanted something that was going to inspire me. I wanted a book that I could open up a page and whatever that particular story was, was going to be the right one that was going to speak to me in that particular day and inspire me to, you know, really search for that silver lining and, and, you know, help change my mindset as best as I could. Yeah, your uh, silver lining, the silver lining of cancer is your book that shares the stories of 13 uh, other women who have gone through uh, cancer in some form or another. Maybe they were the caregiver, maybe they were um, the patient. But I was always, I mean, I was so impressed at, at reading their stories and how beautiful it is that they were able to take away that positivity. And you're really bringing that to people really inspiring them to go, yes, this is crappy. We get it. Um, but there, there is a gift or there's a silver lining. So in this story that you share, mm -hmm. what do you, ex what do you want your readers to take away from the story that you share today? I think I, there's a couple of things. One is that I'm still here 10 years later. So that's, you know, I'm celebrating that. But at the same time, I think maybe just following along my journey and seeing what happens when you are willing to share your story and the impact that can have on others and the things that actually uh, result as, you know, because of it. Um, you know, if we look up at, just a second here, <laughs> if you look up at the, you know, the top there, Silver Lining Conversations, I started Silver Lining Conversations because I talked about it in my book it seemed like the next the next thing that I wanted to do the next part of my journey and my story to inspire as many people as possible and provide that opportunity for hope and and you know being able to grasp onto that silver lining I just thought it was so important to get that out into the world and um, you know so it's it's part of that process by writing things down you make things happen by sharing your stories you have an impact and even if it just brings a smile to one person's face and you change the world or you or you provide an aha for somebody then you've made a difference and i think that's the most important things we all have the power to make a difference so where are you going with all this i mean i, I personally watched it start with uh i don't want to share my story to, okay, I'm sharing my story. And now it is just taking on this full on movement. And it's really changing your life as you change the lives of others. So what do you see? I mean, where are you at right now? Where are you going with it? Wow, that's, that's, a, that's a big question. <laughs> You're getting me to say this out loud so that I can actually take that next step and make it happen. Um, you know, really, I am wanting to get more stories out in print. I am looking to, you know, inspire other women to share their story about, um, you know, somebody in their family or themselves that had a cancer diagnosis that was, you know, th they found a silver lining. I always like to share this one story and I have to find this person. So hopefully if she's listening, um, she reaches out, but she was talking about going and meeting up with her mom who, who was, was very sick and the daughters were there and they decided to go to Walmart to go get matching pajamas. They were gonna have a pajama party. And their brother who wasn't there as much, right? I think he lived a little further away. He said, you know, what are you guys doing? They're like, oh, we're going to Walmart. He goes, well, make sure you get me a pair of matching pajamas too and I'll meet you at the house, right? So it was like making memories. And I think if we can help people make memories you know, especially as this interview is happening and, and we're dealing with COVID and, and you know, self-isolation I mean, self, self isolation and, and that, like, what can you find? How can you find a silver lining? What, what has happened as a result of what you're going through? And I think if we can always look at what can I change to make things better or what can I embrace as a positive in every situation, then we'll just make a huge difference out there. Um, I'm also, you know, I want to get as many books into waiting, room, waiting rooms around the globe. So, uh, you know, I'm looking for people to reach out that would like to sponsor that happening. Awesome. Okay. Um, as we're sitting here listening to you, Tracy, uh, we need to get a copy of your book for sure. The Silver Lining of Cancer. Where can we get it? 
you can get it on Amazon and other online um, stores like that. Uh, as well, if you go to the silver lining of cancer.com, then you can order a signed copy if that's what you'd like to have. Well, how about this? You are, you have a goal. You want to see this book in the waiting rooms of cancer agencies, of doctor's office, to your point that while someone is going through treatment and their hair is falling out, their eyebrows are falling out, and then we scan the pages of People or Us or all these fashion magazines that we uh, see these beautiful women um, with their flocks <laughs> blowing and perfectly done hair and makeup. We don't need to see that is what you're saying, correct? I didn't need to see it. I mean, for some people, maybe that's what they want to do. They want to get lost in it and that's perfect. Whatever works for you. But for me personally, no, I didn't want to see it because <laughs> it's like, I can't do that with my no hair. And I, you know, I already don't really have much in the way of eyebrows when they were gone. That was something else. Right. So it's like, you want to feel, you want to feel good about yourself and you don't want to have anything that allows you to think otherwise. So these stories, this book is filled with stories of, of uh, other women that people reading the, these stories in these pages. And again, they're just really, they're short stories, mm -hmm. and, um, but they're gaining inspiration and hope and encouragement that, wow, she could do this, then I can too. So how about if you're considering getting a copy of The Silver Lining of Cancer, maybe it's just for yourself, but maybe think about it as a gift. Get a few copies, gift it to your local um, medical office, gift it to your local cancer agency, you know, uh, or gift it to that friend or family member who may have just been diagnosed or maybe they're uh, a close family member is going through something. These are stories that are relatable and so important for that person to really understand that they are not alone. You're amazing, Tracy. And I want to really thank you for being part of today's show and for having the courage um, a few years ago <laughs> to step forward with your message because you've really made a difference in so many lives. Um, just before we leave uh, today, do you have any words of wisdom that you would like to leave us? Yes, always look for the silver lining. It's there. It might be hard to find, but you can always find it. So simple. So simple. Thank you, Tracy. Uh, thank you to everyone listening today. Please uh, check out uh, where you can get tra where Tracy, where can we get your book? The silver lining of cancer.com. Silver lining of cancer.com or you can get them on Amazon, but you get the signed copy uh, from Tracy directly. So please uh, check her out, check out her stories. And uh, we look forward to connecting with you next time. So wherever you are in this world, uh, stay safe, be happy, and have a great day.